Someone told me that I should never start another video with, hey guys, because every other YouTuber does that. So I'm gonna start it off with the fact there is a new Thong Song uh, rendition remix out. And if I wasn't going to be slighted by copyright laws on YouTube, I would play it for you. But I will just say this, Thong, the Thong, Thong, Thong. Also, Cisco follows me on Instagram. So you take that for what you will. Okay, so in this video, I am gonna do a Q&A. I promised a Q&A about two weeks ago, but instead I filmed some other things. So it's time. It's time for a Q&A. Before we get started, um, I would just like to say thank you guys for watching this YouTube channel. I've had so many people say the nicest comments and leave uh, likes and subscribe, so thank you. If you wouldn't, if you would do me a favor, um, if you love this YouTube channel and they think I'm a tolerable person, will you forward this to one of your friends? Just say, hey, I think this girl's like kind of cool or lie and say, uh, this girl's kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> anyway, moving on, time for a Q&A. Are you guys ready? Okay, so first question. Do you believe in horoscopes and when is your birthday? If so, what sign are you and does it reflect your personality? Well, guys, here's the thing. I was born on August 27th, 1985. That means I am almost 32 years old. You would never know it from my immaturity. Um, <laughs> side note, can I just say that I just went to a country um, called Nevis and they don't allow cursing there and you get put in jail uh, for six months, up to six months for cursing. So you guys actually, it is a shock that I'm with you and that I'm not locked in a jail in the Caribbean. Anyway. Back to horoscopes. Um, I'm a Virgo. I don't know what that really means. I'm told I'm more like a Leo. Yeah, but I don't really know about that stuff. I did get my tarot cards read recently and the woman was like, you're gonna have a really great career this year and you will have no love in your life. And I was like, great. Oh, wonderful. Awesome. Great news. So like, you'll be crushing it, but you will be alone. That to answer your question, I have no idea about horoscopes. I would like to know more. And um, supposedly this lady comes to your house and does your whole astrology thing. It's, it like people get really into it and people like read a lot into that stuff. I don't. I do, however, get my aura read in Chinatown, which is so fun. If you've never been, there's this great place called Magic Jewelry. And these old Chinese ladies will take your photo with this old timey camera and then they will basically read your aura based on the photo. And my favorite thing is they give zero shits about making you feel bad. Like one time I was there, I was actually on a date there and um, there was this girl sitting next to me and she was getting her aura, aura read from the photography. And the she's like, I guess the reading wasn't going well. And so she asked the old Chinese lady, she's like, do you see anything positive like in this? And the old Chinese lady goes, no. I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, it was amazing. I was like, she was not about to sugarcoat that shit. So that's my answer to that one. Next question. If you had to live anywhere else in the world besides New York, where would it be? Okay, guys, so I've never been to Paris. I know that's shocking. I'm going there in September, and I think I might fall in love with Paris. But if I had to pick one place right now, my non-realistic answer would be Copenhagen because I love it so much. If you've never been to Copenhagen, highly recommend you going. It is an incredible place, and the people are, I mean, only go if you want to feel like the most hideous person ever that's ever existed because everyone there is an angel we literally uh when we were there we we went to this like fast food restaurant to grab a quick bite before dinner quick bite before dinner 
I'm hearing myself. I'm hearing myself and I'm I'm realizing my habits. Anyway, we were we were going to get a, a quick bite before dinner and the people serving the fast food, not that you know, fast food workers can't be attractive by any means, but these people were like angels. They were like models. I was like, should I take you back to America and get you a modeling contract and be your agent? Because I think it could work. Also, everyone bikes everywhere, which I love, even though I'm terrified of like actually riding a bike in person. You can see my bike out there, but I don't really ride it because I'm afraid um, of getting hit by a car. But the amazing thing was about Copenhagen is that the people riding the bikes, like it's so safe there. They were just like leaving their bikes like propped up with the kickstand, not locked anywhere, just there. Uh, and they, we, we came back and, and there was a bike that had been parked there for like two hours in the middle of the sidewalk and no one had touched it. It wasn't locked. In New York, that thing would be like shipped off to like Long Island by now. So I loved that aspect of it. The food there is incredible. Everything about it, the design, it's just amazing. But more realistically, if I had to move anywhere, it'd be LA. Um, I spend a lot of time there already and I do love it. I like New Yorkers so much more. Sorry, my LA friends, I love you. But um, I just love New Yorkers, like kind of like more grizzly spirit. Um, but yeah, I mean, LA has, I'm gonna dare and say that LA has better food than New York and sunshine, like beach, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, if I could live anywhere else in my dreams would be Copenhagen in reality, LA. Next one, do you need an assistant? Can I be your assistant? I'm sorry, the position's already been taken. Next one, um, what would be a meal that encompasses your personality? It could be a really weird combo like peanut butter and sausages. <laughs> I love that that is, that doesn't sound weird to me. Is that so bad? That sounds good. I mean, maybe not like the peanut butter on the sausages, but like both at the same meal, totally fine. I think about this too much, and I also think about my last meal too much. Like if I was a serial killer and I was on death row and they were like, you have to pick a last meal, I think about it all the time. Which is kind of scary because you can totally have a last meal without being a serial killer. Guys, I'm gonna need um, to take a break and go think about that. What's wrong with me? Anyway, I'm back. Um, what would be me encompassed in a meal? I think something a little spicy. So maybe like nachos, like a little spicy, a little greasy, a little naughty. But like, you have like a green juice with it? Like nachos with a green juice dumped on it. And then um, I don't really love dessert that much. And I'm really like, I'm a very kind person, but I'm not like sweet. Um, like I have friends that are sweet. I'm like a little bit more like, hey, I love you, get your shit together. Um, so I think I'd be nachos with a green juice dumped on top and then maybe like a side of bacon. I think I'm supposed to say something healthy. Oh, wow. um, oh yeah, and then I definitely have an iced coffee on the side because that's my life. Also, the nachos would be perfectly arranged because I'm a little OCD. Yes, this is this is this is good. Um, that definitely wouldn't be my last meal, but it is if I if I was encompassed in a food or a meal, that would be what it is. My last meal involves a lot of items. Um, I they wouldn't even need to really kill me. They would just um, I would just die from my last meal, I think. Anyway, next question. This is another food question. Uh, I'm sensing a theme. What do you eat before or after a workout? When I'm 
Working out in the morning, I typically don't eat before. I just have an iced coffee with um, some half and half in it to have a little fat, or I do, um, in the winter, I do a bulletproof coffee. So it's coffee with coconut oil and uh, grass-fed butter mixed in. So I, so I typically, <laughs> I typically don't eat a big meal before I work out. I feel better. Like jumping around with like an egg sandwich in your stomach does not feel good. Um, if I'm a little later in the day working out, let's say if I don't get to my workout till 10 or 11 a.m., I'll like throw a couple hard boiled eggs down the old gullet and then have, again, at least two coffees. So yeah, that's what I typically eat. If I eat at the, if I work out at the end of the day, it's always harder because I'm just groggy. And you know, you don't wanna be in soul cycle and be like food junk. So that's why I always prefer working out in the morning. Okay, next question. Do you have any advice for someone trying to get in the fitness world when it seems like everyone wants to be a personal trainer, instructor, fitness blogger, Instagrammer, etc.? That is a great question. I get this question a lot. Um, the more common question I get is, um, how do I break into the industry? And I would say there's tons of um, opportunities for trainers or instructors. I would say really find what excites you. And this isn't just in fitness, this is in general. Like really find what makes you tick, what motivates you, and then use that to bring that to others. A lot of people want to do social media stuff and fitness or social media stuff in general, ambassadorships, etc. because they want free stuff. They want to get paid to post on Instagram. They want to do all that. And I would just say like, if that's at the heart of why you want to do it, you'll never probably take off because you're really not doing it for the right reasons. Like if you really want to empower and motivate and help people, that's how you're actually going to be successful. Also, I always tell people this, um, and I'm going to do a whole other video on like becoming a social media personality or how to grow a social media following. But I will say this as like a little teaser to that episode uh, of the Shanae television show. I don't know, an episode? What am I talking about? Oh my God. Um, uh, a little teaser to that video is that unless you are really doing something different on social media or as a blogger or whatever, don't bother. Like the, it's already really flooded. The market's very flooded and I'm not saying that because that's what I do, but really ask yourself, what am I doing differently? What can I add that's new? What can I add that is a new level? Where do my strengths lie that maybe other people, you know, are lacking and so I can bring that. Because honestly, why make something that's already being made a thousand times? Um, so yeah, that would be my advice on that, but also understand that you really have to be a person in all of these kinds of careers that deeply cares about people. So if you don't give a shit about people, then being a fitness instructor, a trainer, a social media personality, a blogger, it's really not for you. So keep that in mind. Next question, this is the second to last question. How often do you get recognized in the street? Huh, well, you know, this is like a very weird thing because I never thought in my life that anyone would know me unless it was like an old Tinder date from like years ago that I like ghosted on. I probably get recognized two to three times a day now, which is so crazy, but I love it. Not because I love getting recognized, but because I, I'm like obsessed with meeting people in person that follow me online and it's such a cool experience to be like, oh my gosh, I know you, you know me from the internet. I think it's a magical thing. And people always get super embarrassed to say hi, but if you ever see me in the street, just come say hi. It's not weird. So yeah, it's always really fun. So if you ever see me in class or on the street or in a restaurant, unless I'm on an awkward date, don't say hi. But other than that, say hello, please. Last question. Okay, so this is a big question that I get asked all the time. So I thought I would answer it here at this Q&A. A lot of people ask me how I became an Adidas ambassador. So 
how that all went down, I started my Instagram account um, about two, two and a half years ago. Let's say it's, it's a little less than that, but let's just say two and a half for all intensive purposes. I actually started my Instagram account um, for a job interview in social media and I didn't get the job but I kept you know, posting on Instagram. At a certain point, Adidas reached out to invite me to an event in LA. I went with no intention of anything. I just thought it was so incredibly cool that anyone was asking me to go anywhere. I was like, wait, I get to go for like, for free? Um, I remember just being like so in awe that someone would wanna fly me somewhere. And I remember calling my mom and being like, this is the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. And it was just LA, I'd been to LA a million times, but it was just really cool that they asked me to come out for an event. So um, during the event, I got to know the team there, um, I got to know the brand, and through that relationship, I was able to get to know them more and more over time. And then um, about a year ago, uh, I signed my first contract with Adidas as an ambassador for them. It's been an amazing experience. Um, being an ambassador for them is, you know, not only are you doing photo shoots and um, in their marketing campaigns and things like that, but you also really get to authentically share the brand through, whether that's through social media or just in life. And I feel so strongly about this brand and how much they want to empower women and how kind of how they're breaking the barriers of like what a fitness model looks like. I'm a size eight. That's not a typical fitness model. I don't have a six pack. Um, I, I'm not a trainer. I'm, I'm not a trained professional, but it's about this like everyday woman who is getting after it every day. And I love that. I'm so appreciative of the, the creativity they put into their advertising and marketing. So I'm happy to be part of that. And also like, I love talking about their products and I love testing out their products and things like that. So over time, you know, we've worked together for now over a year. I'm still with Adidas. I love the brand more than ever. She had a shoot with them today. I'm actually wearing uh, stretchy pants. I just put on this top. I don't have a bra on and I put on these earrings so I would look like I'm wearing normal clothes. Yeah, so that's how I became an Adidas ambassador. Um, a lot of people, the follow-up question is, how do I become an Adidas ambassador? And what was really interesting for everyone that's become involved with the brand is that truly it was by living your life and be being an example of practicing what you preach and really putting forth effort not to try to get the brand's attention, but just living your life really authentically and genuinely and loving sport and being good to other women. And these are all kind of tenets of the brand. And so that's how, that's what they're looking for. You know, that's, that's how they, that's how they work. It's not about buying 10 Adidas outfits and tagging them on Instagram or, or, you know, emailing them or DMing them. It's not about that. It's really about through and through being yourself. All these brands are out there looking for people that really align with their message. So the thing is, it's like, don't align with their message. Don't try to be what they want. Be yourself and the right brand or the right partner or uh, whoever will come into your world. And that's how it should work and that how that's how it worked for me. Um, so that is the end of this Q&A. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. I should probably put a bra on, so I'm gonna go. If you have any other questions for my next Q&A, uh, we've got a couple ones coming up. I'm gonna do a social media Q&A. I'm going to do a fitness Q&A, and I'm going to do another dating Q&A. So, leave your questions below, or feel, feel free to message me on Instagram or on Snapchat. My Instagram is here. Boop. My Snapchat is here. Boop. And um, we'll talk to you soon, guys. Thanks for watching.